and Deborah Tavares are here now at Marin General Hospital. We're visiting Dr. Ed Spencer. And this is Dr. Ed Spencer. And um, I'd like you to go ahead and intro yourself, introduce yourself, and talk about what you would like to discuss. Okay, I'm Edward Spencer, uh, MD, retired neurologist. Um, I give my uh, credentials, so to speak. I was a graduate of Stanford University, Yale University Medical School, with a residency program in uh, neurology uh, at the University of California. So, since 1996, I have uh, devoted a lot of time trying to understand why the world is such a total mess. And um, I've followed a pathway um, of, of logic, I would have to say. Um, and uh, there's so much false information out there uh, that you just have to keep at it. You have to be determined to, to, go, to go forward. Do you want to ask me any questions at this Well, point? Dr. Ed, I know that um, because of you, um, I received the document, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars. Mm -hmm. And I have spoken on StopTheCrime.net and on radio throughout the world about that document. So I am forever in your gratitude, you know, I'm forever grateful that you got that document to me. I also want to say, and you probably recall, you also sent uh, a um, congressional reg regulation to us uh, years back now. It was a little over a good paragraph, and it said that the... Uh, Department of Defense could use chemical and biological weapons on the American civilian population without our knowledge or consent. We actually took that uh, to uh, Washington, D.C., and we called you, as you may recall, when we were in the records department to get that um, document number. And we received that document from Washington, D.C. It is because of you that we got that document and then I came aware that the government was um, using chemicals and biologicals on us without our consent. I already knew that, but to actually get that document from Washington, D.C. as a result of your making that aware to me. Okay. So Dr. Ed, we're here again visiting you in uh, Marin General Hospital. And we're here today because uh, we're friends. We've known you for a long time. And we know that uh, you have something to say that you want, would like for us to video and get out there. Right, I sent you something by, uh, by a voice of, of my concern. I've been trying to get the, this, this message out. It's, I've worked on this since the 1996 in a very consistent manner to develop uh, an understanding of what's wrong with the world, why it is a total mess, why there are so many uh, bad behaviors uh, influencing us. And I have developed a com comprehensive hypothesis, or maybe it's actually advanced to a theory on, on what's wrong. And we are definitely under attack and to just to, to enumerate some of those, there's the uh, weather warfare, the, the fires burning up California, the drought uh, drying up and burning up California, uh, the uh, vaccinations which are weaponized, the deterioration or the withholding of advanced medical care, there's fluoride in the water, and there was war, of course, and economic decline. What is going on? Who is, who is doing this? And um, I started out and I read that Buckminster Fuller traveled all over the world, and wherever he traveled, somebody was, there was always supposed to be somebody in charge, a high ranking, and he always answered to someone higher. Now, you don't have to push too hard to find Rothschild there uh, pulling the strings because money is the leverage on everything. And uh, there's a great pressure to do everything in the here and now, to think only in terms of the here and now, 
and to and to to look to the beginning of the United States, which is all bollock stuff, but to not go back to the beginning, or to even you know start searching for the beginning. And uh, what I have found uh, is there is a major aspect of the history of the Earth and humanity uh, that is uh, suppressed. And that is 12,900 years ago, uh, the Earth was pummeled by comets. Uh, they hit uh, in the Laurentide Ice Sheet in Canada, two miles thick. Um, and uh, there was an created enormous floods over the United States, what was going to be the United States, and just ripped out the scab lands in uh, eastern Washington state. This was followed by the Younger Dryas Freeze and uh, Megafauna Extinction, the uh, North American Lion, the Giant Sloth, uh, Mastodons, Woolly Mammoths, all kinds of things went extinct in, in possibly extinct, and I don't know if they're fully extinct, were human appearing giants. And that is interesting because everybody knew about the giants uh, back then. Uh, um, Lincoln talked about the giants when he visited Niagara Falls, about our eyes are seeing with the giants. But why are the giants hidden? And how are they hidden? The thing is, it would, there are, I think, 100,000 burial mounds, but the skeletons are all given to the Smithsonian who hides them. So we're in a situation of, uh, of um, I don't want to use the word conspiracy because we're Secrecy. not supposed to. Secrecy. Yeah, I use the word um, organized deception, um, murder, and theft, or maybe it would be theft than murder. But basically, uh, everything is designed so that we, the people, uh, um, do not know what's going on, and others are profiting. They appear to be profiting, but I don't think they really are uh, uh, profiting by by this secrecy. I mean, I think you know Bill Gates is supposed to be uh, a rich, successful man, but he, I think he's a total failure. He doesn't have a species to come back to. The issue here is the survival and the flourishing of the human species. And we can see everything has been done to keep this from happening. Now there's a, there's a marker here in the terms of the Georgia Guidestones. And I think it was about eight, 1980 or something that these were created. Uh, these granite slabs um, on a hilltop in Georgia um, with um, blurbs about what's supposed to be. Uh, keep humanity at uh, 500 million, one, um, one language, one religion, make room for nature, take care of nature. Now, what we know now when it comes to taking, taking care of the earth is that the main thing is to keep it from getting hit by things a mile in diameter. And there's no real protection that we know of at this time. I think there is a protection out there controlled by others. And, uh, and uh, this will take us into the UFO realm. And UFOs are always supposed to be the chariot of the extraterrestrials, um, something from out of uh, the solar system. But uh, I don't think that this is the case. I think the, the, uh, the extraterrestrials are actually crypto terrestrials. They've always been here, and um, they uh, control us. Even though they're they're not uh, obvious, they're sort of like a foreign body in a, in a uh, in an infection. They they pr produce an abnormality, and we're run by psychopath. And, and uh, the book is. Uh, Ponerology, P-O-N-E-R-O-L-O-G-Y, by Andrew Lobachevsky, uh, the science of evil adjusted for political purposes. And if you look at, at the guys who are running the world, you look at Hitler, you look at uh, the Bushes, um, 
and Obama, I will say that, and then and the Clintons, these people all have psychopathic tendencies. And then you go elsewhere and you find the same thing. So we're managed by psychopaths, and it seems to me that the psychopaths are being controlled by somebody, by something, by some form. Uh, maybe I should stop for a moment just to let me get my mouth um, okay. cleared out. Okay, so we're going to... We're here visiting Dr. Ed, and we came down because Dr. Ed left uh, a voicemail yesterday, and we're going to play it into the camera right now and have it be part of the dialogue with Dr. Ed. So here is the voicemail that you left yesterday with us. Hi, Lou. It's Ed. Uh, I wanted to just talk briefly to you guys about uh, my, my major concern is that everything that's happening to us is a distraction uh, to keep us from thinking about the end game. And the end game deals with uh, the fact that there's the Einstein terror, which has put us uh, 120 years behind in physics, that zero-point energy weapons exist, anti-gravity uh, uh, um, craft exists, the ability to, to modify common orbit orbits exists, and that the end game, which may be um, really stated in the Georgia Guidestone, will be a, a rather major attack, not rather major, will be a major attack on population centers, infrastructure, intelligence uh, of humanity uh, to knock us down and put us back in the bottle where we were for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years under the... Uh, uh, Ice Age civilization and Akhenaten, the sign of the Pharaoh Akhenaten, is an important thing to look at. He tried to destroy Egypt. He is not human. He had a brain that was large. You can see the pictures of his daughters, alleged daughters, and each of these are still around. They're sort of like uh, foreign bodies, and and they work through psychopaths. Obviously, psychopaths are easily manipulated. So I just want to talk to somebody about that. I hope this message gets through. Thank you. Okay. So, Dr. Ed, we're here to talk about that yeah. in this message. Thanks for playing that back. Okay, with the, with the Ice Age uh, civilization, um, it's something that the establishment does not want to talk about. Uh, we know that they were, uh, there was an Ice Age civilization because they mapped the entire Earth. And, uh, and then especially the coast of uh, Antarctica is exquisitely mapped. And uh, now there's a mile of ice over it. And so it's obvious that there was an orientation of the sun involved because during the Ice Age there was two miles of ice over Canada and none over the coast of Antarctica. Um, and then this younger Dryas uh, event came along, the, the fr which froze the uh, or significantly cooled the earth. And uh, though the the hits were in the northern hemisphere, the uh, vapors and, and dust would um, that, that's just an alarm. Probably saying my pulse is fast. Nothing serious. We hope. Yeah, yeah. Um, would, we would go stop? into the south and uh, there's the answers there are, are in Antarctica and you know they're, t they're going on there's all this disinformation about Antarctica all the, the high mucky mucks John Kerry whatever the Pope all go down to Antarctica uh, because there was a probably with uh, almost certainly a large base of the uh, of the you doing okay? Yeah, we're, uh, we're recording a, a, a video. He's good. I'm, I'm fine. Okay, well I need to check because you have someone, you know, yeah. interpreting them. Well, I thank you for coming in and doing my phone. Sorry to interrupt. Was it 11? Well, I actually haven't seen it. She just told me, so I just okay. wanted to grab a pressure, but I'm going to review it now. Okay. But that's what she was counting. Okay. Thank you. We'll see if it's, yeah. The doctor seemed... The other two alarms. So Antarctica, Antarctica looms large in all of this. 
and it's well hidden by uh, disinformation and plain BS. But I've heard the word Akhenaten mentioned in terms of what they found there. And um, what I think the evidence is that the um, Ice Age civilization was dominated by a non-human species and not an extraterrestrial. They didn't come from outer, outer, outer space. They've always been here. And how long they've been with us or we've been with them, I don't know. And the, 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 the earliest point I can come up with is 160,000 years. And that's out of Adam's calendar and the um, fact that it, the, that array of stones in South Africa uh, um, uh, uh, sites Orion's belt. Orion's belt is really big with whatever is going on. And it's three stars, not quite in a line. And the pyramids, the great pyramids, are uh, lined out uh, in, in, in the array of, of Orion's belt. No, not quite. So, um, but uh, there, there's clearly humans involved in all of this. Has there been interbreeding, do you think, then, with this? To create the well, I'm sure they went after. The, I'm sure they went after our women. How to, how many hits they got? I don't know. But you do something a million billion times. It could be. I mean, the, the whole this is something. To looking back there in detail and studying this and excavating this area, the areas in, in uh, South Africa is critically important. And of course, they're ignored. Well, um, intentionally withheld. Yeah, and yeah, they're they're, they're withheld. Um, uh, so that's what I th I think. The essentially what part of the problem is is we're not dealing with a human. We're dealing with psychopathic humans, and then we're dealing with a mind which is in fact not human, and it and it regards us as animals. And then you begin to think, well, how do we treat animals? And you get nervous. I get very nervous about this, you know. Uh, Temple Grandin has designed the cattle chutes so that the cows don't get... Now, Temple Grandin, for everyone that's listening, is uh, in her late 60s. She's uh, an autistic woman. Um, and actually, I've heard her speak uh, here in this area many times. In fact, recently mm -hmm. she spoke in um, Silicon Valley, and she said she never felt more at home with so many people on the spectrum. We're talking about Silicon Valley. And that's something <laughs> that she said. So that is interesting, don't you think? Yeah, well, I think that, that some slightly warped brains uh, are, are in demand by, uh, I'm going to say our owners, for want of a better word, because they've learned how to manipulate. They, they so they've the created the autism, warped yeah. the brains, and can easily manipulate because mm -hmm. basically the commonality in autism is there's no reciprocal uh, emotion yeah. uh, about love or caring or concern, and they make the perfect human robots. Right. And the people who work here taking care of me, the other patients, are not easily manipulated because they're operating on love. They're operating on a human behavior. And so that's, that looks like that's, that's, that's what's going on. So now you were talking about your concern about they think of us as animals. Mm -hmm. And I think you're right because certainly when you look at the definition of deep ecology that is written into all the policies now in all of our cities, all of the villages, everywhere around the world, that everything has equal value. A rock has equal value <laughs> to a human. Yeah. Um, well, we can certainly see mm -hmm. those mechanisms in place through mm -hmm. all the policies and everything that is being um, perpetrated on all of us with the weather weapons, as you mentioned earlier, the fires, the storms, their uh, tornado, tornadoes, floods. They're using dams as weapons. Yeah, that's what we're, we're, we're waiting for Oroville to come to us. Right, uh, um, and poisonous water, and of course we know about primary water, that yeah. it's clean, fresh water. Yeah. water. 
So that's that's the, and so we have to rebuild our entire brain, and um, and coming from a neurologist, that's a pretty big task. What, how do we rebuild our brain? What do we what do well, we need I to do? Well, I think you have to start by talking to each other honestly, and and just not holding back, and um, and and as far as I can tell, I'm I'm a targeted individual, in that uh, things happen to me which seem rather bizarre and there are a lot of people who are targeted uh, like that and, then, and because our brains can be accessed over the horizon electronically the cell towers uh, hone in on us the satellites sometimes pardon me? cell phones cell phone everything like that yeah um, and so we have to um, we have to talk to each other and we have to get organized. Now, I've been trying to get organized for a long time as, as you, and it's very hard to get organized. And one of the reasons that it's so hard to get organized is that you have um, people who uh, just uh, are caught in a belief system, and the belief system that they're caught in uh, is essentially is to ignore reality because there's so much stuff going on. If you study chemtrails, you know, and, and um, with they're right there, and then you can see what's, what's coming down. You look at, at um, vaccinations, autism, one in 100, one in 10,000, now one in 80. You, you look at what happens with the rife and the, uh, the technology. So there's a lot of things to study. My, uh, my experience, is that the people who are blocking all of this are, uh, live in a belief system that is plain vanilla or less than plain vanilla. They don't believe anything that, out, that is outside the, the parameters of what is normal. That anything that goes bad, it's the person who did it. You know, they do not understand they refuse to acknowledge or approach uh, the myriad um, uh, facts which are available, and um, and what these uh, these individuals are doing is they're they're shoveling, they're feeding poison to everyone around them. If they were p passing out small quantities of arsenic, you would begin to, to see everyone around them dying. But, and what, what they're actually passing out, of course, is this uh, solid wall of ignoring information. Except for now, we are seeing people dying because of all the poisons and toxins that we're now right. breathing. And I'm going to be leaving with you for your perusal here, mm -hmm. since I know that... Uh, you probably don't have the kind of information we like to read. And this is called CIA 1960 um, Memorandum yeah. Control of uh, Climate Control. Uh, CIA 1960 Memorandum of uh, Climate Control. Wow. And I think you will find in here they talk about neuro linguistic programming, they talk about creating a world of fakeness. And they had to set up this large apparatus of fakeness so that we would believe. And I really particularly uh, like this quote, and you probably will find that interesting too. This one. The eyes are useless when the mind is blind. Yeah, that's great. So I'm going to leave this with you, well, but to you. the point that you're making um, about uh, the control and people's inability to see or to get organized. We can't, no, people can't get organized if the eyes, because their eyes are useless because their minds are blind. Yeah, okay, the mind is blind. I like that, I like that, that, that expression. And um, so that's what we need to do. And it's not going to be easy. And one should not expect it to be easy. One should expect it uh, to be an uphill climb. But we have a choice. We don't have a choice. And why do I say we don't have a choice? We're at a point now where it actually looks like we're beginning to win in some ways. And that's, and that's you know, like the Monsanto 
and the Roundup, and uh, Monsanto has been hit. Or and just Bear just bought them, so yeah, it's just morphed into something different. It more, and there are other things, and and so it, we can have the appearance of things getting better, but they're not really getting better. But I think there's a nasty endpoint here, uh, which means that that that's churning the disinformation, disinformation, and and jumping through hoops, whether it's you're jumping through hoops because things are getting better or getting worse, it's a distraction. And this distraction uh, originates um, or is, is based essentially on the, the fact that we're uh, a hundred, about 120 years behind in physics. Um, and you mean in being allowed to know yeah, what is going on? Well, well, or in the application of physics. And uh, uh, Robert uh, Thomas Townsend Brown has written about this. There are a number of books on the, on anti gravity technology, and uh, and UFO. One can, one should read about UFOs. I was I've been I've been misled by this stuff, but the now UFOs. Now, how would you say you've been misled? Talk well, about that I thought that they were. Um, well, I, I thought that there was a lot of disinformation. That maybe they weren't actually so physical, um, but actually were projections into the mind by the mind control technology. So, like I, holograms. Yeah, but they're no, they're hardware. Hardware. They're, they're okay. out there, and and there's a as a as a point to look at here is Japan Airlines, 1628, and this was in 1986, a 747 freighter carrying wine from. France to uh, Japan was accosted over <clears throat> uh, Alaska by a, a very strange craft. So so strange, right in front of the nose, they turned off the cabin lights, the cockpit lights, and the cockpit was lighted up by these things. They could feel the radiation, and they were going ahead, right ahead of this uh, 747. This is Captain Terahuchi. And, and those things eventually went, went away. They did get radar fixes or radar returns from the aircraft radar. And then Terahuchi looks over his shoulder to the left of the airplane behind it. He's being followed by something the size of an aircraft carrier. Now, something the size of an aircraft carrier is flying along to the left of a, B, uh, of a 747. He makes a 360-degree turn to the right to run away from it, as he says, and it, you know, it, it follows him. And the ground sends a United airplane coming the other way to get close to see. And of course, by the time they get there, there's nothing to see. But you find out that the anti-gravity, electrogravitics, and and there's a lot of books on this, and I can you know. On a, on a, Later future, I can if you do this, I can give the references um, that you're in these things, and they can flit around, but because the gravitational field is modified, there's no there's no meaning. So it can go zip zip, and you don't feel it. You don't feel it, and there seems to be no size limit. Um, you know. So hence, the, there's no time or space, basically. Well, I don't. I can't say that. I can say that only the gravitate gravity is being controlled. Okay. And these things go off, off Earth. They can travel far, and they're probably manufactured in shipyards because they don't have to worry about structure uh, and weight so much. So these things can be gigantic. Obviously, an aircraft carrier you're following a 747 is gigantic. And in 1956. A Navy constellation out of um, Keflavik, Iceland, uh, was accosted by something that was 350 to 400 feet in diameter. Same thing flew along with it. And the military know all of this, everything, but everything is so screwed up that it's not put together. So it's all compartmentalized where yeah, people it's, aren't it's able to put the puzzle together. Ultra, ultra compartmentalization. It's yes. just incredible. 
so that you can actually do that. You can build an army and attack and kill made out of these, whatever I would have to say, Legos, human Legos that just are, are slightly impaired and put together in, in this function. Now, this is a very interesting uh, situation. Um, I, I, since I was talking about the, the, the uh, Terahuchi, why is the mind who is operating things doing this? Why are they, in a sense, communicating with the Japan Airlines? Why are they showing themselves? So uh, I, well, one reason I think is that we're not dealing with a monolithic uh, enemy here. They're, it's, it's, they're, they're, your faction inside that don't want total destruction. They don't want us back in the uh, in the bottle of uh, uh, the uh, Georgia Guidestones bottle, and and we're not, so not, so this just added complexity. Okay, so what what could be the the end game, the nasty end game? So I think that probably is enormous that uh, these uh, gigantic spaceships, anti-gravity, run by tech, anti-gravity technology exists, that they have gone off planet, and that they are actually on Mars, and one, one uh, uh, Now you met Dr. Ronnie Kildee in... Um, yeah, unfortunately, just briefly. Briefly, yeah. and, and when you were in Belgium yeah. a couple of years ago, just prior, actually a few months before she was yeah. presumably assassinated. She talks about the fact that uh, uh, we've been going to Mars for quite some time. Did she discuss that at the conference? No, unfortunately not. I wish I so wish I had had no. She wanted to know who are you? Are you a spy? That was a dinner, nice dinner party. So getting back to the idea then of Mars, you were just talking about anti gravity and yeah. Um, okay, so it seems clear that the Ice Age. Civilization took a big hit 12,900 years ago when the younger Dryas comets, whatever their origin were, a, a comet that came into the inner uh, solar system and broke up. And there's another explanation out there which is quite fascinating, is that they, uh, um, uh, there was a supernova type 2, uh, 230, mile, 230 light years from Earth, blew up and absolutely fried um, Australia. What? Ten, ten minutes. Okay, and fried, and fried Australia. Um, and so that's, that's just a lot of stuff, but it's clear that a lot of stuff hit us. Um, they are capable, some, something, somebody is capable of going up and redirecting comets fragments that still are in the uh, uh, orbiting in the, uh, in the tarred stream, and that I and the end game, you know, the stack them and pack them, get them off the land, the Chinese ghost system, uh, that you have uh, these so now targets. What, so now, what uh, you're talking about when you say the Chinese ghost system, okay, we've the, been the, watching the ghost, the ghost cities now yeah. for quite a number of years, and what we now know is that the military in China is going to the uh, rural country farmland uh, with guns and forcing the farmers to go and occupy those ghost cities. Target. And, and targeting they're targeting them. And they're committing suicide. They don't want to go. They're having to put uh, restraints such as suicide nets and so forth. And the, the rules for living in the cities are very strenuous. Uh, you cannot work over the age of 50 or 55 work is then no longer available for you and your family has to take care of you. So what we've recently discovered is some of these farmers then are returning back to their farm farms and finding it that they've been leveled. So where they came from was utterly destroyed. Genocide. Genocide of the human species. That's exactly what's happening. So <laughs> you're talking about the bigger picture and where you think this big event moving us into these electrified, st uh, condensed uh, living conditions that we as people are not able to emotionally survive or function in with increased frequencies. And we're going to be bombarded by stuff from space. 
they can knock off most of us and over make a huge dent over the weekend uh, over a weekend and then there will be uh, no growing for five years and and we'll be put back in the bottle so, so so you're thinking then that the wildlands project which is basically looking at the map for example of the United States that dr. Michael Kaufman put together a number of years back the reason and purpose for consolidating us in these human settlement zones is so that then we're imprisoned. Uh, they're eliminating cars, which is what they're doing. We're now seeing ads saying, ditch your gas guzzler. They're yeah. moving everything over to bikes and walking paths and uh, electric vehicles. And we know that they're eliminating petroleum now. It was always presumably fossil fuel. It was never fossil fuel, but now they're saying, we're running out. So you're saying when we're condensed in these cities, various cities all over the globe, then yes, like they do for crowd control with some of the systems that they already use to, uh, for example, we discovered Operation Crimson Mist yeah. that was used uh, in the mid-90s in Central Africa where they use microwaves to fly over the Hutu and the Tutsi tribes and they beam the frequencies on the Hutus and they literally slaughtered the Tutsis. That was that huge Rwanda genocide. So you're seeing something like that then? Yeah. Hitting I, 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 the cities I, I, when we're in de these dense populated zones. Yeah, by, by electronically and also with stuff from space. And, and a woman who has been um, abducted talked about, she, seemed, she said they seem to be saying that, it, that they're they were preparing for an asteroid hit. So you see, there are multiple ways we've been put, we've put in position, we're not doing anything, we're not growing anything. Then we get splattered by things from space, and then there's no growing anywhere, no how. And, they, and I should say, okay, there are huge underground cities, already in existence, under ocean floor cities in existence. And I'm saying, humans, if you want to survive, if you want to survive as a species and go forward to the brilliance that we can accomplish, you gotta, you got to wake up and you got to talk to each other and you got to fight. You have to pull out the love and use it. And so how is it that we best fight, Dr. Ed? They've got the uh, interconnected underground cities with bullet trains. They're fully stocked. We know that. Um, there have been many books written. Many people have gone down into the underground yeah. um, cities. So when you say fight, other than trying to break people out of the fake reality, which is I know what you've been trying to do, certainly what we've been trying to do now for a number of years, how, how else? I mean, we've got to to create the awareness. Is that the fight? The I mean, awareness. that's the fight. Is that is the fight, us. is to create the awareness. And, there, and, and to ask each other to help. So when, when we ask each other to help, because I, I certainly have a lot of questions for, from people when I present the documents, and they're grim, they're bleak. And people say, well, what do we do? And certainly we know that we need water. We know mm. that we have primary water. So we're certainly encouraging people, along with Paul Power from yeah. the Primary Water Institute, to get to a good, solid, clean water source. What other things would you recommend that you You know, do? I always like t-shirts. People do, to create t-shirts with messages on it. I think this is the time to do that. It's so not t-shirts? Yeah. Talk to people. Stamping our money. I know many people stamp their money yeah. with stamps. We have to do what we can. And, and I think the, and the main thing is to realize that all of the humans, or the apparent humans or psychopathic, that are, are, are against us are under the employment, are being controlled by a non-human species. So, you know, you, everyone sort of looks, oh, he's a banker, he's that. One has to develop a major contempt for the turncoats who are, this is I think the major psychological thing. Well, I would ask you this then, because we know that um, 
the mind control aspects of the frequencies is, is really literally the psychotronics are taking over people's ability for free will. Um, how, how is that potentially what's happening to the psychopaths? Well, I'm sure that is, but if you build a cell tower, you can knock down a cell tower. So, I mean, I, if this is going to be, um, this, the, the, That's the we don't have the answer. That's the kind of being in. We, we have to say, the, 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 you get up in the morning, you say, I'm alive, I know how to love, I want to go to the brilliant future that my species can communicate. I'm working for the human species. And um, it's, it's going to be a, a change of the mindset of the few and then the many. Because I don't think this is irre irreversible. It's, I mean, it's an incredible thing, but I don't think it's irreversible. So, so you don't think it is irreversible? So no, I think we can win. Okay. And I guess I've been thinking that since 1996. Okay. And, and based on how we win might be left for interpretation, but certainly... I know we'll, that we're we'll, in a battle. Um, our minds will be changed. We'll have a different feeling. We'll be, we're, our, our, our minds will no longer be so blind. They'll be a little bit blind, and then, then they'll be getting... Um, so I can't have, find it. I, I want you to get this out far and wide. So we'll put it up on YouTube? YouTube. Wherever tell people. Can yeah, far website. and wide. And, and, and this isn't the first. We'll do others, and others will do others. But that's the way it's going to go. That's the solution. That is the solution. Thank you so much, Dr. Okay. Ed. We will do that. And love to you all. Thank you. Love to you, too.